Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. The prepper and survival world is full of different kinds of equipment that are marketed as the ultimate survival tool for whatever specific use they were designed for. And some of that stuff is pretty nice and it's good to have, while the only good thing about some of the other stuff is its marketing. But if you were to buy into all of that stuff, you would go broke pretty quickly. Fortunately, there's plenty of everyday items that you can use for survival, and most of them are pretty inexpensive. One very simple and cheap item with survival uses is a pencil sharpener. Those do an excellent job creating tinder that you can use to help start a fire. Just put a pencil sized stick into it and turn it like you would a pencil. The sharpener will produce thin shavings that will light pretty easily. You can also use this process to sharpen small sticks for things like traps. The next everyday item that you can use for survival is a bandana and those can be used many different ways. One of the easiest ways to use one is just as a headband to help keep sweat out of your eyes, but you can use them as cooling towels also. Just put a little bit of water on them and wrap them around either like your head or your neck, and those should help you stay at least a little bit more comfortable. If you injure yourself, they can be used as makeshift bandages to help stop bleeding and prevent dirt and other debris from getting inside of that wound. You can also use them to hold different kinds of gear or to collect things like firewood. If you have some paracord with you, which you should, then you can close up that bandana so whatever you have inside of it won't fall out. Bandanas also do a very good job helping you collect and process water. For example, if you have a puddle that's a little bit too small to dip something like a canteen or a camp cup in, then you can just put that bandana in it and then wring the water out into your container, boil it, filter it, whatever you need to do. You can also use them as a pre-filter to remove any larger debris from your water before you run it through your actual filter. Bandanas also work well if you need to protect your hands when picking up something hot, because most of us aren't running around with potholders and things like our bug out or get home bags. Then if you wrap some rocks or other hard objects in them, then they can make some pretty decent clobbering implements also. The next everyday items that you can use for survival are cotton rounds and cotton balls. I've shown Vaseline cotton ball fire starters several times on this channel, but you can make an upgraded version of this using cotton rounds, wax, and lighter fluid. Start by making a 50-50 mixture of melted candle wax and lighter fluid, but when you're adding that lighter fluid, first of all, make sure that the container is far away from the fire that you used to melt the wax and then also that the wax has cooled down a little bit because you don't want that lighter fluid igniting and causing some big problems. Next, dip the cotton rounds into that mixture and let those dry. And doing that should give you a fire starter that can burn for at least a few minutes and is easy to store in different kinds of kits. To use one, just break it apart to expose some of the cotton fibers and light it using a ferro rod lighter or some other ignition source. Metal cans are another thing that you can use for survival and one use is just to do things like heat candle wax like I showed a second ago. Because there are some prepper related tasks that you don't don't want to use your regular pots and pans for, especially if you're married and you value your life, but you can also use those metal cans to make different kinds of stoves. Something simple like this can be used to elevate a camping cup or a small pot over an alcohol stove, fuel tablet, or a small fire. But if you want to, it is possible to make something more sophisticated like a gasifier stove out of a couple of different size cans. Then you can also cut them apart to make things like arrowheads or other sharp objects. Another item that you can use for survival that we tend to just throw away is water bottles. If you need a funnel to add some fluids to your car, then you can just chop the bottom half of a water bottle and use one for that. You can also use a water bottle as a pre-filter to remove larger debris before you run it through a filter. This works with bottles of different sizes, and all you need to do is stuff something like cotton balls, paper towels, or a rag into them and pour the water over it. As the water passes through that, larger debris and also a lot of sediment's going to get trapped. But one thing I like to do is drill holes in the caps of water bottles and use them to water my seedlings when I'm starting my garden. You can also use the same concept to make squirt bottles that you can use for things like rinsing toothbrushes to help conserve water because just dumping water straight out of a bottle onto your toothbrush or using the spigot on something like an aquatainer or water brick is going to use way more water than what you actually need. Then it also doesn't hurt to have some good quality designated spray bottles as well. And with those it's a good idea to have designated bottles for different things like you can have a dedicated bottle just for water, you can have one that you use to mix bleach solutions, 
and that way you don't have to worry about cross-contamination. Garden sprayers are another good thing to have since they can be used to treat areas with pesticides or apply fertilizers, but once again have dedicated sprayers for specific tasks. And a very interesting use for a garden sprayer is the Heine Hydrant, which is basically a post-apocalyptic bidet to be used long after we've run out of toilet paper. But once again, if you do that, be sure that it has never had any sort of chemicals in there because if you get that stuff in that particular area, that could be an end of the world situation in its own right. Then moving on from that, if you like Altoids, their tins are something that you should almost never throw away. The internet is full of different pocket survival kits that people have made to fit inside one. You can do everything from making a general purpose EDC kit all the way to specialty kits for things like fire starting. And those tins also work well for organizing smaller pieces of gear within a larger kit like a bug out bag or get home bag. Then you can also use them for other purposes like making char cloth. To do this, make a hole in the lid to allow gases to escape, then place some cotton material inside. Place the tin over a fire and basically allow the materials inside to cook. And when you take them out, you're going to have a piece of fabric that is very easy to light using either like a lighter or a ferro rod. Plastic totes also have several survival uses and a lot of them are similar to what you would use buckets for. However, totes will work much better than buckets if you're trying to collect rainwater. Since they tend to be larger, they'll have a greater surface area to collect rain. And if you combine them with a tarp, you can get even more. You can also use them to create kits like this lights out kit that I put together a couple years ago, as well as organize different kinds of gear. The long flat totes work really well for things like clothes or anything else that you just want to be able to slide under a bed. And you can also use plastic totes for food storage. Just avoid overloading those with things like canned goods, especially if you have a larger tote because those will first of all be pretty difficult to carry and the weight might be too much for the container itself to handle. Now, if you plan on using your totes in the attic or anywhere else overhead, you may want to secure the lids in place so they don't pop open when you're pulling them down, and zip ties work really well for this. Place the lid on top of your tote and use a drill to make holes at each end. These should be just a little bit larger than the width of your zip ties. Next, run your zip ties through the holes and cinch them up. You can also do this with toolboxes to prevent them from opening on accident. And that brings us to our next item on the list, which is zip ties. In addition to using them to secure lids, you can also use them for other things like making headlamps. Take something like a boonie hat that has branch loops going around the outside of it and loop a couple of zip ties around those. Then find a flashlight and tighten the zip ties around it. This will give you a makeshift hands-free lighting method that you can disassemble when needed. Then you can also use zip ties to make a pole saw. Find a long stick or tool handle and then use some zip ties to secure a folding saw to the end of it. This is useful if you need to saw a branch a little bit higher than what you would normally be able to reach. Just be sure that you are well out of that branch's path when it starts to fall because you don't want to be staring at it like a turkey in the rain when it comes down unless you like head injuries. Zip ties also work well to make shelters or other kinds of structures like this is a tripod that I made out of a few sticks and a zip tie. Then of course there's many other ways that you can use zip ties for survival and I actually did a video showing a lot of them about this time last year and I'll link to that in the description below. Then another survival mainstay that you may already have lying around the house is paracord. Real 550 paracord has seven inner strands and as the name suggests can support loads up to 550 pounds. Just as is, it works well for doing things like making shelters, securing loads, or making knife handles. Then if you take it apart, the inner strands can be used as sewing thread to repair different kinds of gear. But if you want to take it a step further, then you can pick up some survivor cord. In addition to having the seven inner strands, it also has some extra things like monofilament fishing lines, some snare wire, and some wax jute, which can be used as an emergency fire starter. And I know that this is something that can probably fit in the survival gimmick category that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, but this is one that I actually think is pretty useful. Since it's a little bit more expensive, you're probably not going to buy a whole lot of it in bulk, but it can serve very well in first line kits like your get home bag or your bug out bag, and then you can store some of the less expensive stuff in bulk for just general use. Then there's some items in your medicine cabinet that have multiple prepper and survival uses, and hydrogen peroxide is one of my favorites. If I'm starting to have an earache, I'll just take some hydrogen peroxide, drop it in there, let it set, 
and that also works well for helping get rid of excessive earwax. Most of you probably already know how useful it can be for cleaning fabrics, especially if you're dealing with blood stains, and hydrogen peroxide is an ingredient in a lot of color-safe bleaches, so there really is a lot to that. Hydrogen peroxide also works well for disinfecting surfaces and is more effective at doing so than a lot of other things, including alcohol and sanitizing wipes. Certain things like norovirus are notoriously hard to kill, but hydrogen peroxide is one of the things that is capable of doing that. So if somebody in my family has like a stomach bug, that's what I'll use to disinfect the bathroom or any other affected area so that the rest of us don't catch it too. Then you can also use hydrogen peroxide to help you maintain your home's pipes. The black sludge that builds up in a lot of drain pipes like from your washing machine is largely bacterial and hydrogen peroxide will kill that. So it's not really going to get rid of large clogs that are already present, but if you use it preventatively like once a month, just pour it down those drains, it can help prevent that stuff from building up in large quantities. Then another useful item that you may have in your medicine cabinet is mineral oil. It's pretty easy to find in the pharmacy section of most big box stores because it's marketed as a laxative, but it also does a very good job maintaining knives and other kinds of tools. I like to use mine to keep the joints moving smoothly on my Swiss Army knives and other folders, and also use it to coat the blades of my carbon steel knives. If you're just using it for knife maintenance, one bottle will last you a very long time and it doesn't really expire either, and you can use it to maintain other things like wooden cutting boards. Then there's also some items in your kitchen that you can use for survival like crock pot bags or other cooking bags. Those are pretty durable so that makes them fairly well suited for water collection and one good way to go about doing that is as a transpiration bag. To do this take a bag and wrap it around the end of a tree limb that has a lot of foliage and then use some paracord or something else to secure it in place. This will create sort of a greenhouse effect where the water inside those leaves will evaporate, condense on the inside of the bag, collect at the bottom, and then you can collect that water afterwards. Just when you're doing this, be sure not to try that with any poisonous plants like poison ivy because that could be very bad. The next item in your kitchen with survival uses is baking soda. When cooking, it can be used as a yeast substitute because it is a leavening agent, but if you mix it with a little bit of water, then it can treat things like bug bites or athlete's foot. You can also use baking soda and water to create a homemade toothpaste, and if you add half a teaspoon of it to four ounces of water, you can use it to treat heartburn. Most of us have probably used baking soda in our fridge to help keep odors down, but you can use it for other smelly items as well. My four-year-old already has stanky man feet, so we're going to let some of it hang out in his Ninja Turtle shoes for 24 hours. If you mix equal parts baking soda and cornstarch, you can use it as a deodorant, and then it can be used just by itself to help put out small fires. Another common item that you can use for survival is aluminum foil, and one of my favorite uses is making campfire dinners. Place some meat and some vegetables on a piece of foil and wrap them up. Then you can cook that in either an oven or on an actual campfire. Aluminum foil is also highly reflective, so you can use it as an emergency signal or as part of like a homemade fishing lure to attract fish. Then it also works well as a scrubber to help clean like pots and pans. And if you have something that's really stubborn and stuck on, then you can add a little bit of salt and that'll help give it a little bit more abrasion to remove that. But one really good use for aluminum foil, especially with all the craziness going on right now, is to make Faraday cages to protect electronics. I showed how to do that in a video a few months ago, and if you want to see that, then you can click here, or if you want to see other items that have survival uses, then click here. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.